Today on the Hobby Grotto, we're looking at three different ways to paint true metallic metal. The first one is a gold that leads into a bronzy, brassy effect. And I'm doing an overbrush or heavy dry brush here with Gehenna's Gold. For all these metals, the individual paints don't really matter so much. It's more about the tone, so you could use most gold paints for this base, as long as you're consistent throughout the process. I like Gehenna's Gold because it has a nice kind of reddish quality to it, so it maintains that gold richness throughout the process, you know, as we move through the subsequent layers. Known oil will give us some shade and fix up the messiness of the dry brush. You'll find washes like this to be a key ingredient of getting metal done fast, and you don't have to use a black wash. You can also use a wash that's dark brown or red for a more antique feel when you're working with gold. I'm going to start working up the layers, first with a dry brush of the base gold, and this is going to be a bit lighter than the initial one we did, and then I'm going to start working some silver into the mix. Dry brushing is a good technique for metal because if you're careful with it and go in successive light coats, you can create a kind of burnished effect. And I mix up the dry brushing with traditional painting, particularly on focal points, as sometimes for detailed bits the dry brushing just won't cut it, so you want to kind of blend the two techniques together when painting metal. You can adjust how many successive layers of gold with silver you do here, depending on the overall effect you want for the model. The more silver you add, the more you're going to move into brass and then white gold style looks, so it's just about what you want overall with this. I always like to paint on some edge highlights with pure silver to give the miniature further definition and interest. Uh, but this is entirely optional, you can even lightly dry brush the edges to get a similar effect. Because of the shine inherent with true metallic metal, you don't have to be as accurate with the highlights. For this next metal, we're going to be looking at using contrast paints as glazes to tint the metal any colour you'd like. It's good to start with a nice neutral silver for this, lead belch is a good base to work up from. I'm going to hit the model with some Nuln oil, as is standard for silver metals. And then I'm going to dry brush some iron breaker to bring back some more of that shine. and finally add some Rune Fang Steel edge highlights to just pick out that definition. Now it's just a matter of adding a glaze. For this I've chosen Magos Purple, but any colour will work at this stage. I like contrast paints for any kind of glaze work because they're already at a pretty good consistency, but I still mix them with some medium to get it even thinner because you don't want to be putting this on too thick. Multiple thin coats is definitely the way to go with glazing. And different contrast paints have different levels of pigmentation, so the amount of medium you'll need to add is going to vary. Just test it on your thumb first to make sure it's nice and thin. Lastly, I'm going to go through probably my favourite kind of true metallic metal, which is a dingy and dark style, great for the armour and weapons of undead and other types of creatures like that. And you want this mix to be about 50-50 Rhinox Hide and Iron Warriors, so it has that nice brown tone while still maintaining a metallic glimmer. Next up, a lighter dry brush of Iron Warriors, which may be my favourite of the Citadel Silvers. I find dark silvers like this work with so many types of models, and I generally prefer it to a lighter style silver across the board. Any kind of dark wash is going to further accentuate this colour scheme, and you can go with a brown wash to further enforce that rusted effect, but honestly, you can't go wrong with Nullin Oil when you're working with washes for metallics. Finally, I'm going to bring back some glimmer across the metal with some light dry brushing of lead belcher on the edges. And some painted edge highlights with Rune Fang Steel, concentrated on the focal points. This sharp extreme highlight will further emphasise the worn nature of the metal, um, but this is optional and you can just save this for key models if you like, it's just a, a nice little kind of finishing detail. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video gave you some ideas for painting true metallic metal. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on The Hobby Grotto.